Welcome back, everybody. He is known for his critically acclaimed tough guy persona he portrays on screen, but in real life, our next guest is just a real softie in the best <laughs> possible way. He's devoted his life to helping others. Nothing more meaningful than that. Joining us today with Donut Stories and a whole lot more. Please welcome back <laughs> Danny Trejo. Welcome, welcome back, back, Danny. Danny. Great to see you, man. Always good. I mean, what you do is that your story, everything about you is just the best, man. I mean, congratulations on everything you've got. Da uh, Trejo's Tacos, Trejo's Cantina. And a little while ago, you launched Trejo's Coffee and Donuts with the best donut box ever. ever. Look at this, man. You forgot Trejo's Records. Trejo's, Trejo's Records. I, I mean, just you're want a busy that, man. I want that donut box on my wall. I'm telling you, it's like decor. <laughs> Look at it. Now, you're here to talk a little bit about some great fall flavors uh, for the coffee and donuts. What do you got? Well, you've heard of, the, like, the Spice Girls, right? Yes. I, I'm launching the Spice Donuts. <laughs> and they're... Uh, <laughs> Are there more than five? <laughs> There's small spice. Oh my gosh, let's see. I'm going to take a look at this. Spice. I'll tell you what. That's baby spice. That's posh spice. There you go. Well, I think there's pumpkin an old spice, spice in there. Look at those. No? We got an old pumpkin spice? spice. Danny. Oh my goodness. Vegan apple. Oh my. Spice donut. That one's uh. Oh, I see that's in the front. I'm going to give that to Cameron, the vegan apple. Oh, there we go. There you okay. go, my friend. I like it. All spice Thanks, donuts. Deb. I'm going to get one more for me as well. These oh, donuts man. are really fantastic. I have been to your donut shop more than a few times. It's Listen. hard to eat just one. No better way to start the day. Really, you are not kidding. Right pink building right on the corner of Highland and Santa Monica Boulevard. And you really can't miss it. So for the people at home who maybe are not in the Los Angeles area and can't get to one of your restaurants or your fantastic donut shop, they can still make some of your delicious dishes at home because of your Absolutely. new cookbook, cookbook, Trejo's Tacos. Where's the cookbook? Oh and you talk God. about the new kind of Mexican L.A. food. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, we tried to do, you know, it's like we the, the Latino community has admitted that we have a, a problem with obesity. You know, the food that we eat, great, delicious food, but it will pack on the pound. Right. And so what we tried to do was get dishes that are vegetarian but still taste, you know... Uh, authentic. Uh, authentic. And uh, they all have still that... That Mexican spice, that Latino spice. Which is super important to you because I know you were inspired to write this book because of your mom. My mom, my mom. And what an amazing cook she was. Amazing cook, right? And me and my mom always talked about having a restaurant and making, you know, tacos and stuff. And But my dad was kind of like the Mexican Archie Bunker, you know. Like, <laughs> and we started talking, he goes, hey, hey, I got a kitchen right there. Go cook whatever you want. You know? <laughs> but it was no, a different time, Danny. Different, no, no, it was because, like, the, in the 50s, you know, Women didn't, women didn't really work. You know, they weren't, I don't want to say they weren't allowed. But, well, but women didn't work. You're right, though. It you was know, more of the yeah, men yeah. working and the women staying home and raising yeah, the families. And my mom wasn't allowed really to work. Right. You I know, mean, your life have story so much. It has. I mean, and you know, we're hearing a little bit of it right now. Yeah. Your life story is so incredibly interesting, so much so that there's a new documentary In out about one. your life. Inmate number one, uh, the rise of Danny Trejo. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what you can about this. It's powerful well, stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, you know I, I grew up in the state, they call it state raised, juvenile hall, different camps, youth authority, yeah. state penitentiary, state penitentiary. I, I wasn't like a, a model citizen in prison. I, 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 I went for six months and, and did five years, so that kind of tells you something, yeah. But it's interesting how your experience there in a way, led to your incredible acting journey. I mean, 300 roles in films and, and TV projects. And so how did that experience kind of transform you and propel you into that world? Well, it's, it's funny, a guy named Eddie Bunker, I was, I was on a movie set of a movie called Runaway Train, and I ran into Eddie Bunker, and I was with, me and Eddie were in prison together, actually in San Quentin, and he said, Danny, I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight champion up in San Quentin. I go, yeah. And he says, you know what? We need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. And I said, what's it pay? And they were giving you $50 to be an extra, but it was cash. So everybody was cool. You know? And uh, I said, what's it pay? And he says, $320 a day. And I says, how bad do you want this guy beat up? I, I, no, I thought, no. That's, that's a hit. That You're mad at somebody for that kind of money. And, uh, and uh, we ended up training Eric Roberts for oh my movie Runaway yeah, Train. Of course. Wow. And sure. The director saw me and, and he kind of saw that I could handle Eric and uh, he would say, Danny, you be in movie. You fight Eric in movie and you be my friend. 
So he got you in the movie, wow. and then you come from a prison background. You right, don't like right. people saying you be my friend. Oh, oh. You know, and I it's got kind of. And then he leaned over and he kissed me on both cheeks and walked away. I told Eddie, I'm going to train the kid for 320, but if I've got to be kissing that old man, I want more money. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, he's European. He's European. You know, I, I want to say something, but something that was really stuck out to me is that you said that all the good things that ever happened in your life are a result of you helping someone else. And that's exactly what happened. You were helping when someone else. When I dedicated else. my life to help another people, and let, ask God to let me die with dignity, I would say his name every day and I would do whatever I can for my fellow man. Every morning I wake up, I've, my prayers and the first thing is let me help somebody. And we do that every day. If you go check the trunk of our car, got thermal underwear, socks, old shirts for the homeless. And that's what we do. And it's like, that's the way I stay feeling good. And people say, how do come you're always up? I said, that's why, that's why you're, you're trying to help people come up and it really works. That's why we meant when we, when we right. said tough guy, that's really a softy at heart. <laughs> heart you do gold. beautiful work, man. It really is. It's always great to see you. Congratulations on everything. Yeah. Vote. Okay. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> and you know what? And buy some donuts. I'm and a big fan of your donuts. <laughs> if he's saying it, we're going to listen. Thank you so <laughs> much, Danny. Thank you. Danny. Thank you. you can You're find out sad. more about Thank Danny's you. films, his restaurants, and much more at dannytrejo.com and trejostacos.com as well. Enjoy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>